Here with my dear old friends, Hank and Cupcakes. It's been about five years since you've been on the show. Uh, welcome back. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know he spoke. Apparently not. Last time we had you on the show, it was just you and I. We had a wonderful conversation about songwriting and your songwriting process. Uh, you guys have just built a tremendous career for yourself since then. Um, I wouldn't go that far as to say tremendous, but we're building. Well, I would call it tremendous. I mean, I think you guys have, have climbed that ladder more so than, than many other artists uh, that I've known. And we've obviously been friends all this time, and you're quite the road warriors now. Uh, how many shows a year are you playing, like, around the country? Uh, this year we're we're doing a year-long tour for our new album Cash for Gold. So we've done six months up until now. So about over a hundred shows. You're still based here in Brooklyn. We're based in Brooklyn, but we're we've been on the road for six months. We're on a short little break right now, and we're hitting the road again um, in a few weeks for another like five months. And what what part of the country do you do you like the best? The parts where people go really wild at our shows. Where's that? All kinds of places. Um, we love playing upstate New York, Rochester, New York, Utica, New York. Uh, we just discovered Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. People go wild there. And um, Florida, we love playing. You've really, been like lots all over places. the country. Like, yeah. you, your name recognition has is, is really grown in the past five years. Um, we've been, you know, getting in the van and driving hours every day and playing shows everywhere so well i try to catch you when you're back here in new york and one thing i've noticed is that's funny because i didn't see what our last show jimmy i wasn't there then but i sent one of my emissaries point is um i've definitely noticed how much better you guys were always good but you've just gotten so much better i mean your performance your live performances are just absolutely captivating um how has how do you feel like your your live performances have evolved let's ask this guy uh, I think that we're much more comfortable on stage right now. Mm -hmm. Like something, f we dialed in something visual, I feel, and something about moving and interacting on stage where we feel very comfortable and uh, very expressive. And does that come from just doing it so much? I think so, yeah. I there was don't no agree. plan, but I think it happened because we tried hard and some of these things just kind of happen. I, I think we are more comfortable on stage because we're more comfortable off stage. And we went through a long process of shedding the things in our lives that were making us uncomfortable. You mean like as people or as performers? Yes, yeah, as, as people, as, as people. performers, as everything. We've come to a point where we're feeling more comfortable as artists, as people. We've you know, you're happier. Evolved. You're, you're in a happier place. I agree. Her answer is better than mine. Well, I have noticed that the diva quotient has has seems to have declined a little bit. Uh, the you, what? You're you're very strong-headed. I mean, I'm sure I'm not the first person to tell you that. You get set in your ways. I mean, I, you are the exception. I tell everybody if there's ever an exception, it's cupcakes. But I do feel that like more relaxed energy from you. I don't think it's my imagination. I'm not relaxed on stage. No, you're relaxed right now. That's all that matters. Oh. I think she's more comfortable and... Um, uh, is it the adulation that's done it? Um, all of the, the mass adulation because... What does adulation mean? It means that people just love you. I mean, the minute they see you. I have been at shows, the ones I've been at, where people are not paying attention, they don't know who you are, and within 10 seconds of you starting your first song, people, they just start paying attention. They come from the far corners of whatever venue that is, and they are like right up front. And it's instantaneous, um, the, the, the transformation that I've seen occur time and time again. And you must know it. I mean, I know you're... I'm happy to hear it, but it's not, the, it's not what we experience every show. Like, if we were at a point where we felt that people love us, we would definitely not be interesting. So the fact that we're always scared before shows and nervous and don't feel like um, it's a done deal and it's going to be amazing is what makes us push and fight and do it every show like, like no one knows who we are. And a lot of times no one knows who we are. We've been on the road for six months playing a lot of places, including many cities where no one knows Hank and Cupcake. So. Well, they know you now. Um, what I was saying before about being the exception and being strong-headed, clearly I'm joking and we are old friends, so I feel like I could say that. You guys were signed to BMG uh, Germany at one point, you recorded an album, um, ultimately told BMG to go jump in a lake and just continue to be independent. 
Um, what's the story with that? We actually recorded the album first independently and then got signed, mm -hmm. which is a point to But make. But you didn't like the terms of the deal? And or we were also signed to the BMG in the US, not in Germany. Oh, in, okay. W we were Either way. Publishing in Germany, label in US. Either but way, it's all you one. did tell both of them, all of them, BMG, to, you know, take a hike, jump in a lake. Uh, what caused that? Um, we felt very uncomfortable with the way things were going and we felt like there wasn't exact leadership and focus as to what they wanted to do with us on one hand. On the other hand, we felt like they didn't really want us to be involved and they wanted to kind of push us aside, which is not something we're used to Nobody being. Nobody pushes cupcakes. Exactly. <laughs> anywhere. And I learned that the hard way. <laughs> So you really took responsibility and built out your own uh, fan base, your own following, your own audience, and have just absolutely taken the reins of your career. Um, there's really no other way to describe it. Am I wrong about that? We did take the reins of our career, but I think uh, there's a lot of people who do help us on the way. We're not, I mean, we're doing everything ourselves in, in the sense that there's no there's no one working with us on our team but, but that's more grassroots and you are enlisting these people they're becoming fans and then they want well, not help. only fans for instance we just opened for of montreal on our last tour in chattanooga tennessee and that's because the promoter at the venue has seen us before and i guess he appreciates us mm -hmm. and likes our music and he's helped us out and we're very lucky to have built just relationships with people mm -hmm. along the way who were really helping us you have always had an incredible um ability to write just the catchiest hooks. Uh, your new album um, reaffirms that. Uh, Our new album, Cash for Gold. Your new album, one. Cash for Gold. Uh, plug there. Um, what are your favorite songs on that album? Uh, my favorite song on that album is, there's a few, Relax is one of them, Bat Your Eyelids. I really like the song Shut Up. And I would say 50% of the album is my favorite songs. And. Do your songs just come, or do you just really sweat this stuff? Like, do they just come out and they're they're just written before you know it, or do you constantly go back and revise and revise and revise? Uh, usually they're written before we know it, but the constant revision is something that happens when we're working on the arrangements and taking it from a song that was written usually on piano to the Hank and Cupcakes realm of bass and drums. Mm -hmm. And now, has that approach been consistent um, for the past five years? Has anything ever changed? Do you ever write on it? acoustic guitar or anything else I mean you're I've always described you as like the edge of the bass in terms of like all the effects you use but has, has the fundamental style of uh, songwriting uh, changed at all uh, I think so on some songs uh, it was different especially in this record like if a couple of them came from um, cupcakes playing with the with the, with the synth mm -hmm. So those came more electronic maybe, or more uh, in the box sounding songs like Shut Up and um, Keep Going. And um, These are, by the way, very um, diva-like titles. You do realize that, right? You, you, you're not under the illusion that you don't have an inner diva. I mean, I know it. Come well, on, come actually on, Actually, the song Shut Up is very personal and internal song, but. Right, okay. You're very sensitive at, at your core. I know that. We all know that. We're all artists here. What do you have on the horizon over the next uh, four to six months? Four to six months. We're going to be touring a lot. We're playing some really cool festivals. Which ones? Uh, we're playing Summerfest, Milwaukee, Riverfront, Chattanooga. Um, Utica Music Fest. Utica Music Fest. Uh, Backwoods Music Fest in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Are you getting up to Canada at all? Yeah, playing some shows in Canada, playing a bunch of festivals in Chicago, which is really cool. Um, Bethlehem. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Music Fest in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. You guys have got to have some crazy road stories with, uh, with as much time you spend on tour. Uh, give us one. Um, one show in Athens, Georgia, we were sleeping in a college students house and one of the bedrooms you know they they let us sleep in in the middle of the night a naked dude walks into uh the room and starts like staggering towards the bed and i guess it, he was, it really was probably uh drunk or drugged or something because he, he probably got into the wrong room and i woke up and i see this <laughs> thing and i'm like uh, 
I'm like, this thing being the person or this the thing guy with on the, with the, okay. you know, yeah. and the, microphone. with a microphone and <laughs> and I was like, uh, you know, I didn't know what to do because it was coming right at us. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was like, uh, hey, what's up? Yeah, he was. And he kept coming. Right. And yeah, I don't know how. how he said, wrong room, man. Ah, yeah. So right. the guy so turned right. around and then the next morning. We saw him, and not a word was spoken yeah. about Silence. it. Silence. Probably for the best. Now, did he know who you were, or who you think you are? At that time. Or you think we are? I know who I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> I know who you think you are. Uh, I don't know. We didn't really talk to him. Okay, I get it. So after the tour winds down, what's uh, what's next up on the docket? Uh, we're actually gonna take some time off in Atlanta, Georgia. We've decided to write our next album, so that's very exciting. We're not gonna spend the winter in New York, and. Why Atlanta? What, what's, what's down there? Uh, we were thinking where to go, and we thought Nashville or Austin. And Atlanta seems to be a really, really amazing location, and we know tons of amazing bands out of there. So well, It's I, warm. Yeah, it's definitely warm. I hope the next time you are up in New York and you do have some time, you know, I could have you back over for dinner. I used to really enjoy when you guys would come over. And You're the first person who ever showed us Spinal Tap, by the way. You never saw Spinal Tap? I actually saw it. At your know. place? Yeah, well, I have it on autoplay. Uh, 24-7. On like five screens. Five screens, yeah. yeah. I pretty much live For the it. last seven years. <laughs> <laughs> the last seven years. It's so great to see you guys again. I just wish you the best of success. And everybody knows I, I just adore you guys. And uh, so great to have you have you on again. Thanks, Jimmy. Next time we're going to have to get some colors on you. Yeah, I could borrow some of those. <laughs>